Hey guys, it's Daniel. In this part, we will be rigging our character in spine, add meshes to create squishy movement, and organize all the different directions to simplify our walk. In the first part of the tutorial, we created the character's PSD file we are using in this video. If you want to follow along, I place a link for the PSD file in the comments below. Without further ado, let's start rigging. As I stated in the previous video, we are going to duplicate and mirror both arm and leg to create the left and right hands in all the directions. We created the arm arm control bone and an arm bone, which we split into two. We select the arm bones and go to New and click on Strike. Place it between the arm and the hand bone. Next, from the hand bone and the fingers bones. The bones bend smoothly and we only need to make the arm attachment follow along. We create a new mesh for the arm and bind it to the arm bones. Adjust the weights to get a smooth bending of the arm. We do the same for the leg. As we want to be sure our character will walk on the ground and not get cut by it, we create a second IK for the foot. After clicking on the foot bone and selecting the IK constraint, we place under the foot's new IK our leg IK. Now we can bend the knee and have the foot move as well. Now let's create a mesh for the body part. I used the generate option to create 63 vertices and did the same for all the 5 body directions. The body shape is simple and I won't need it to move around much, so I choose to use the generate vertices it is. If it bothers us when we start emitting the walk cycle, we will go back and rearrange the meshes. I choose to add a mesh to the character's bands as I will probably want it to move as a secondary animation when the character walks. I made sure to add it to all the directions, and bind it to the head bone and the banks bone. After creating the meshes and placing all slots under the relevant bones, we duplicate the arm and leg and reposition them. To flip them, we change the scale of the control bones to minus 1. Make sure to change the name of the duplicate bones and slots by using the Find and Replace text feature. Let's move to the Animate mode. Here we will want to create an animation with all the five directions. In the end, we will have a spinning character which we will use as a direction bank. We will start with the south direction, and because we are using this direction in the setup mode, we only need to keyframe the sound attachments. To optimize our workflow, I go to the tree and use the filter to show us only the skin placeholders. By writing S in the search box, we can easily access the relevant attachments. We do the same in all directions. Be sure to place different directions attachments at different times in the timeline. So 0 will contain the south direction, 1 the southeast direction, 2 the east direction, 3. The northeast direction, and 4. The north direction. Some directions may need a change in the draw order, so don't forget to keyframe any changes. Not all the attachments places are right. We have to reposition the attachments to fix it, but first, we will duplicate our whole skeleton to use as reference. I am setting the duplicated skeleton slots to a darker transparent color, so we can see our main skeleton beneath it. Now, in our main skeleton at the setting mode, we go to each misplaced attachment and reposition it according to its relevant bone. When we finish, we go to animate mode and reposition the bones to recreate the original position of the attachment. Be sure to have your auto key toggled on so each position change will be keyframed. Last but not least, we need to add the arms and the legs to all the different directions. 
Make sure you have the arm and legs attachments to keyframe in all the five directions. It may be confusing because these attachments have in their name S, which stands for South. But as we don't have different attachments designed for the different directions, make sure to keep this attachment target on. We reposition the arm's control bone and the arm's IK based on each direction. We do the same for the legs, though it can get a bit tricky with its two IKs. You will need to reposition the IKs and add a minus to the foot scale. And that's it! We now have all the directions keyframed in our bag. Thank you for following along. A link to this spine file is available to download in the description so that you can check it out. That's the end of the second part of the 8 direction tutorial series. In the next part, we will animate this character and create a walk cycle in 5 different directions. Be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss the next part of the tutorial. We also have other game dev tutorials about spine animation in Unity in our own games dev blog, so you can see how we use spine animation in our own games dev process. See you in the next part.